The Lunar Wolves are probably one of the most renowned legions that fought during the Great Crusade. Later on, they changed their name to the Sons of Horus and then joined the War Master as he turned against his father. But not all of the Lunar Wolves fell to the corruption of Chaos and Horus Lupercal. Some of them stayed loyal to the Golden Throne, the Emperor, and the ideas of the Great Crusade. And in today's video, we're going to discuss the last Lunar Wolf. Now, you're probably thinking that the last Lunar Wolf is obviously Garvio Loken. He was part of the Mournival. He served with Sir Janus, Abaddon, Little Horace Axelmund, you know, some of the big absolute characters that served during that time during the Great Crusade. But no, it's not Garvio Loken. Garvio Loken played a massive part during the Great Crusade, the Horus Heresy, and the Siege of Terror, but he is not the last Lunar Wolf. Now, information in the latest Black Legion supplement that was posted some years back, this is not new in terms of the book, um, it states that there was a Lunar Wolf who was found in in stasis the official story is um the space hook was called the soul of damnation and it was discovered by the flesh terrors the flesh terrors sent a squad aboard the space hook to obviously hunt down for relics locate xenos foes and destroy them basically to go and find and kill whatever was on that space hook but instead they came across this ancient stasis chamber and inside was a Lunar Wolf Space Marine. Now, we don't really know how he ended up in the stasis chamber. We can theorize, of course. The, the logical explanation probably is he was traveling through the warp. Maybe the Gellafields failed. Maybe the engines failed. And he threw himself in this stasis chamber to save himself. So when the ship actually did come out of the warp, his brothers from his legion could find him. But of course, what has happened, that ship was lost in the warp. It's been slung together with other ships it's formed this space hook and he's been thrown out 8,000 years later and then found by the flesh terrors now the cool thing about this is that the flesh terrors actually activated the stasis chamber they awoken the lunar wolf inside they actually spoke to the lunar wolf they sat him down they told him about the atrocities of the sons of Horus, about his gene father, Horus, you know, turning against the emperor. His entire legion, or should I say most of his legion, turned against the emperor's light, and they waged a war that was known as the Horus Heresy. Imagine just waking up from a, like, 8,000 year slumber, all the brothers that you knew are dead, everyone that you fought with is your friend, is dead and then learning that the father figure this person you served all your life basically betrayed everything he stood for and turned on the emperor of mankind himself now of course once he learned this information rage filled this lunar wolf so much rage that he actually took a craft from the flesh terrors and vanished into the void the only thing that we can really theorize from this is that he's heading towards the Eye of Terror. He's taking the fight to his fallen brothers. Maybe this is the Lunar Wolf that comes across Abaddon in the 41st millennium and actually beats the living hell out of Abaddon for all the betrayal. Well, this kind of happened in the 38th millennium, so it's probably not going to be around. Unless he gets lost in the warp again. He goes into the Eye of Terror. He comes back out and it's 2,000, 3,000 years later. That technically could happen. And another thing it doesn't really mention in this blurb of text is how we actually got the craft from the Flesh Terrors. This was a full Flesh Terror Terminator team. I can't see a Lunar Wolf overpowering the Flesh Terrors, killing them all, taking their craft and then disappearing into the void. Maybe the Flesh Terrors like understood like he has some unfinished business and they just let him upon the galaxy to go and finish that business. Now, just before I end this video, I'm sure some of you are here thinking, what the hell, Barak? Why are you talking about this? This is this is weird. This is strange. This is out of the box. And that is my intention of this. I'm actually kind of starting, well, it's not really a new series. I would love some suggestions of you chaps, by the way, for this, is I'm trying to cover some unknown pieces of lore or lore, which is not really known to the greater audience. This was passed to me uh, to a friend today. Like, I just learned this information and I thought it's a little cool story to tell. Um, you know, I don't want to be doing like massive long lore videos and stuff like that. I want to do little short 
videos bringing these little bits of branches of information to you, to the wider audience. I'm sure most of you know this because you're probably like me, you know, you're really consumed into 40k. But to the rest of us, you know, the general crowd of 40k fans, you know, giving them some information and stuff that they may not know. Anyway, that's enough talking from me as always. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Again, if you've got any cool little bits of law, unknown 40k law, um, post it down below. I'll research it. I'll look at it and maybe I'll do a video. I'll give you a shout out if I actually use that piece of law um, that you've given me. Um, see you now. Have a great day and bye-bye. Oh.